Tonight, we are talking about walking in your freedom. People of God, we need freedom. We need liberty. We live in a world that is so depraved that there are so many things that's vying for our attention, so many things that's looking to entangle us. And we want to be free. God wants you free because you know what? He does not have anyone else beside you. You are his mouth peace, you are his hands, you are his feet, you are everything to God and he's looking for you to rise up in the fullness of the glory, in the fullness of the power and in the fullness of the anointing that he has placed within you so you can be a mouthpiece in this world, so you can bring people in, you can really walk with him alongside him to get ready for the coming of the great King Jehovah. But you can't do any of that if you yourself is entangled and bound. So we're going to talk tonight. Galatians chapter 5, go with me to Galatians chapter 5, 1. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Do not be entangled. Do not be burdened again, NIV says. Do not be entangled or do not come under any more yokes and bandages. Why? Because Christ has set you free. And he who the Son set free, beloved, is free indeed. Matthew 12, 43 and 45. When an unclean spirit, the Bible says, go out of a man. He goes through dry places seeking rest and find none. Then he said, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he found it empty, swept and put in order. Then guess what? Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. When the enemy comes in, dwell in your tabernacle, torment and bombard you. And by chance, by the grace of God, you get delivered, you get set free. And, but you don't do what it takes to maintain that deliverance. You don't walk in that deliverance. Guess what? The Bible said, we just read it. The enemy is gone out, delivered, set free, cast out. He goes and then he collects seven more demons. But before he does that, he comes and he inspects. He comes and he sees, oh my God, the house is empty, is garnished. There is not, nothing else occupying. Then he goes and he collects more spirits and he comes and the torment for you becomes worse than before. So you know what? We need to make sure that we are delivered and that we are set free, but not only that, but we walk in that deliverance. This verse indicates to us that it's possible for a person to be delivered, totally set free, totally cleansed, and then to have to find themselves back in bondage again. Can you not see that? So in order to walk in perpetual victory, continuous victory, there are certain things that we have to take care of. So many things, but I've chosen three that we want to talk about tonight. The first one is found in John chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus answered and says, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And the slave does not abide in the house forever, but the son abides forever. Therefore, if any man is set free, that man becomes free indeed. Listen to that. A servant of sin we become when we dip and we dabble, when we do things that are not right, 
when we go and we cheat and we lie and we sleep around and we gossip and we talk about people, we allow this bitterness and envy in our hearts when we don't forgive, when we allow sin to dom dominate our body, our flesh and our soul and our spirit, the Bible says it serves as an open door. The enemy will come in like that. The enemy comes in through the doorway of sin. So, beloved, make sure that you are saved and make sure that you say you stay saved. You keep the door locked, bolted, so the devil, the demons, the spirits that went out does not have the avenue to come back in again. Can you say hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. First of all, we thank you for deliverance. First of all, we worship you. We give you all of the glory. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 10, 8 says, Whosoever break a hedge, the serpent will bite him. Whoever breaks a hedge, the hedge that God has placed around our lives, the perimeters God has placed, place around our lives. He's giving us ways to live and things not to do. When you go out of that perimeter, when you tread on grounds, dangerous grounds, you open the door and the enemy comes in to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Let's keep the borders closed. Amen. Jesus said to the crippled man at the pool of Bethsaida, the man was found there crippled 38 years, not needing, not needing help and not getting help. Jesus got there, helped him, set him free, and then he told him, go make sure that you don't sin anymore. Because if you do, greater demons are going to come and afflict your life. If you do, you're going to open doors for torment, for oppression. Don't sin anymore. It's an indication that sin is a tormentor. Sin will enslave you. Sin will take you to places that you don't want to go. And when you get there, you will not know how to get back out. Sin will enslave you. It has a yoke. It has a bite. And it will bite you. In churches today, we don't want to talk about sin. We don't want to name the name sin. We just want to say, oh, you know what? It's a mistake. Oh, you know what? My bad. Oh, you know what? You know, I, I sidetrack. No, you sinned. And when we sin, we need to acknowledge. The Bible says if we confess our sins, oh my God, he's gracious, he's gracious, and he's kind, and he will forgive us all our unrighteousness. He will wipe it away. He will cleanse you, and he will empower you. As many as believed him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So when you believe him and you say, God, I am going to walk with you all the way, he gives you the power to overcome everything that is overcoming you. Come on, shout hallelujah. He is so good. He is so kind. He's so amazing. He's so a father. He does not want you in bondage. When God said, don't do it, it's not because he's trying to kill your joy. It's because he knows that that road will lead you into perdition. That road will lead you into disaster. That road will open the door. It will give an access to the enemy to come in and to torment your life. So people of God, let's take the grace of God. Amen. The grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us to live godly righteously. Grace doesn't permit us to go and live any kind of way and say, you know what? Grace covers it. The devil is a liar. You will live and then you find yourself in a place you don't want to go to in eternity without Christ. If we keep saying grace covers it, grace appears unto all men and is teaching us to deny ungodliness. Women of God, let's deny ungodliness. Anything in your life that is not right 
right. For Christ's sake, let's ask for grace. Let's, he does never condemn us. The woman that was caught in adultery, he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. Go and do it no more. Because you know what? I need you. I need to walk through you. I need to empower you. I need you to be the agent of change for your society, for your generation. I want you to be a history maker. I want you to be the one that when you enter atmospheres, everything changes. The devil is bound. Demons flee. At the mention of the name of Jesus through your mouth, it's worth it. It is worth it. We cannot exchange the best for, for little peanuts. You know, things that glitter us, but that are not really gold. That's vowing for attention. Let's let it go. Come on, tell, tell yourself, I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Whatever is the besetting sin in your life, let it go. Let it go. Lust, let it go. Masturbation, yes, let it go. Adultery, yes, lust, let it go. Lying, cheating, you know, it's not a big thing. It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. So let it go in the name of Jesus. The second thing that's a big door opener, hallelujah, I'm going to, it's emotional health. It's emotional health. Our Emotional well-being needs to be so strong, so intact, so we keep the devils away. You know, we are, we are made in three parts. We are triune beings. You have a spirit. With your spirit, you commune with God. You have your emotions. You have your soul. And with your soul, you there flows out of your spirit, out of your emotions, your senses, your self-awareness, your desires, your intellect. Everything that makes you aware of yourself and of God is wrapped up within your soul. And so the Bible, the Bible tells us that with the spirit we commune with God. God breathed the breath of God in us and we became a living being. So the spirit is so important and all of our Christian lives, we are taught to just feed the spirit, feed the spirit, feed the spirit. We want the spirit to be vibrant within us. We want the spirit communing with God, but you know what? Without your soul being in the right, healthy place, your spirit is not going to be able to do what it needs to do. Because guess what? Your soul serves, it serves as a processor and a transmitter. It processes information and it transmits information. That's what it does. Whatever it receives, it processes it and it transmits it. It sifts it out. No, we take in this. No, we don't take it. And then it, it transmits to your spirit. And your spirit is going to receive it or reject it based on the healthy nature of your spirit. When your spirit is down and out and weak, being fed by the junk of the soul, you are not in a healthy place spiritually. So that is why the devil does everything the devil can do to bruise us in our soulish realm, to wound us in our soulish realm. Because when your soul is battered, wounded, and oppressed, everything it transmits is negativity and negativity and negativity alone and only. Do you know that the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man receives, whatever you are receiving is what you are thinking, is what you are meditating on, is what eventually is going to uh, come out of you. And before long, you are polluting yourself and you are polluting your spirit and you are polluting your environment because out of the abundance of the soul, of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. So it's very important that we not just focus on making the spirit vibrant and strong, but also we take time with our soul. The good shepherd said what? Come on. I will restore your soul. I will restore your soul. Because many of us, the enemy knowing the importance of your soul, 
targeted you, targeted you right at infancy. He tried to kill you. The rape that happened when you were 5, 10, 6, 8, 12, in your teenage years, it was the devil. He brought in that accusation. He brought in that abandonment. He causes men to speak, even parents, to say things that pierced your soul, wounded your spirit, so that you are just at this point where you are broken in so many places by the rejection that you suffered, by the abandonment, by the rape, by the shame, by the broken relationship, by the harsh and dark divorce that you had to go through. It was all the plan of the enemy, the purposes of the devil to enslave you. Enslave you and put you in a place where you are not able to fulfill the purposes and the plans of God. Because when your soul is darkened, you see everything through that lens. God is going to heal us today. Let me share some indicators of the fact of the wounded soul. It's unforgiveness. When you find yourself, you know that you have to forgive, but it's so hard for you to forgive. I have seen a person, a strong woman of God, crying and asking the Lord, please, I want to forgive this person, but it's so hard for them to let go. You know why? It's something that is coming straight out of the wound, the, the woundedness of the soul. When you have rage, but you know, everybody gets angry. Anger is just an emotion. But when your anger gets to the point that you want to hurt somebody, when you begin to begin to uh, get thoughts, when you begin to receive thoughts, when you, your soul begin to be so oppressed and down to the point that you want to commit something, just want to kill somebody. I remember many years ago, one of our ladies called me and she said, Kemi, come to my house right now. I said, why? She said, I'm go if you don't come, I'm going to kill my husband. I just bought a gun. And you know what? I was there by the time she hung up the phone, you know. And the story was very simple, but because of everything that has been adding and upon adding and upon adding, and she got to a place where the cup was so full and it was getting ready to tilt over. You know, if I had not been there, if God had not been there, maybe she's probably serving life sentence by now. You know, when your rage gets to the point that you want to kill somebody, when your hatred is so thick that you cannot stand to even walk on the ground the person is walking on, you know that is serious. When your mind is already always tormented, there's always a war within, your peace is constantly lost, you have this envy that you cannot get over. When the glass is always half empty, always half empty. When everything is negativity upon negativity, you know something is just there within your soul that has to be healed. It's not them. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. It is not them. It is me. It is me. It is me. It is me, oh God, who stands in the need of deliverance, who stands in the need of help. When someone offend me and and that offense wound me so much to the point I can't sleep, I can't think, oh, I'm having is turning up and down, oh, I can't believe they did that, oh, I can't believe they said that, oh, I can't believe they said that, and my peace is lost. Beloved, I stop and I say, no, can me think. Nobody should have this much control over my emotions. Nobody should have this much power over my life. If it's happening, it's because I'm allowing them to do it to me. After all, the Bible says we should die. Can a dead man take offense? That's a question I always ask myself. So we need to bring our emotions before the Lord and say, God, help me. If all of your relationships keep breaking up. If every job you get, you go into, there's problems. If every relationship you go into, there's 
problem, you have to st stop and say, you know what? I am the only com common denominator in all of this various broken relationship. God, fix me. God fix me because if I don't, if I'm not fixed, the enemy will continue to get advantage of my life. John 14 30, I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. That was Jesus talking to his disciples. He said, for hereafter, I will say no more because the prince of this earth is coming and he's looking for an avenue. He's looking for ways to trap me. He's looking for ways whereby he can enslave me. He's looking for ways where he can torment and oppress my life, where he can block and stop my destiny. He's coming to look for that avenue, but he can, he's not coming to create anything new. He's only coming to see if he can find anything in me. What can the devil find in you today? Let's say the enemy comes and he's to tempt you. His assignment is to come and trap you. His assignment to, is, is to come and destroy your ministry, destroy your life, destroy your home and your marriage. What will he find to use against you? He's not going to create anything new. What is in your soul that needs to get away so he does not tap into it? How much anger is dwelling inside of you? How much rage are you covering up? How much bad attitude that's destroying everything and everyone around you? Beloved, He's only going to tap into what is already there in you. And Jesus realized that. And he said, no, he's not going to trap me. He will find nothing. And so my prayer today, come on, lift up your hand right now, wherever you are. Lift up your hand and say, Father, come on, in the name of Jesus, come on, pray. Put your light inside of me. Put your such light inside of me. Remove bitterness. Remove jealousy. Remove anger. Remove unforgiveness. Remove everything that has pierced down into my soul. Everything that was done that I have not forgiven. Remove it, Lord. Come on, pray. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for... Uh, even allowing the enemy, giving him the opportunity, giving him the advantage. Forgive me for all the envy that I have held in my heart, all the, the, the pain that I have allowed to maintain or remain in my soul. Father, forgive me. Wash me. Come on, pray, pray. God, wash me. Wash me. Restore my soul. Restore my soul. You are the restorer. Restore my soul. Restore my wounded spirit. Restore my wounded soul. Restore my broken spirit. Restore me. Come on, pray. Jesus, restore today in the name of Jesus. Because the enemy is coming. If he hasn't come, he's going to come to me. It may be today to you. It may be tomorrow. But the enemy will come. The Bible said that he left Jesus for a season. He's going to come and try to trap you. What is it he's, that he's going to find with which to trap you? Let it go. Let that unforgiveness go. Let that rage go. Let that anger go. The Bible says that we forgive. So the enemy does not take advantage of us because we are not ignorant of his devices. His devices, his plans, his attack is to come in and, and trap you through unforgiveness, through all of these little things, little foxes. It's not the big things. You are not robbing the bank. You are not chasing people's husbands. You are not doing any of that. It's the little things. Come on, we should let it go so we can walk in our deliverance. Remember, Jesus told the man, don't go and sin anymore, else what will come upon you will be worse than what just left you. We want to walk in our deliverance because Jesus needs us to be whole. He wants you whole. He wants you whole. He wants you whole. Tell yourself, he wants me whole. How can you not be whole? 
when he died and shed his blood for you? How can you not be whole when he paid such a price for our redemption? How can we not be whole for all that he did for us? He gave us his Holy Spirit. He put his spirit upon us. He left the spirit here to guide, to lead, to teach, to direct, and to help us. How can we not be whole? Hallelujah. The second, the third thing that I want to share is breaking ancient demonic altars. Breaking demonic altars. Breaking demonic altars. Judges chapter 6 verse 25. Now it came to pass in the same night that the Lord said to him, Gideon, take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it. Hallelujah. 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 Well, what does this mean? What, what, is, the, what is God saying? At this season and at this time of Israelite history, they were being oppressed. They were being tormented by the Midianites. Every time they had increase, every time is the season to harvest their crops, the Midianite army will march into town. Every payday. <laughs> the Midianite demons will come to town and they will just plunder. They will just take. They were not stealing. They were taking because they, were, they had dominion over Israel at this point. And the Israelites, the Bible says, were very impoverished because of these Midianites. So there's this man called Gideon. One day he was threshing his floor threshing his wheat, but he went to the room and was hiding doing it. Why? Because the Midianites will come and pounce on him and, get, and grab every single thing. So he was hiding doing it. And in his hiding, he sees an angel. An angel comes in and say, thou mighty man of God, the Lord hand is with you. The Lord is going to use you. The Lord, he's giving him all this, you know, reassuring prophecies. And Gideon said, angel, you're saying the Lord is with us? Where is the evidence that the Lord is with us? I'm looking at the de devastation all around me. I'm looking at the calamity all around me. I'm seeing the impoverished and the poverty. I'm seeing the stress and the distress of my people. And now you're telling me God is with us. Where is he? Where? Show me the evidence. And God said to him, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So uh, the next thing I want to talk to you is about breaking ancient demonic altars. Now, what is that? What is, what is ancient demonic altars? You know, uh, let's read Judges 6.25. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Gideon, take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden images that's with it. What is that? This time, let me give you a brief history. This time in Israel's uh, history, they were under the oppression of the Midianites. And every time there was increase, every time it was time to harvest their crops, the Midianite army would march into town and they would plunder all of their increase. Every time there was time for their sheep and their goats and all of that to bear, the Midianite army would brush to town and just demolish and take and snatch. And the Bible says that Israelite was so impoverished, highly impoverished because of this Midianite. And so there was a man called Gideon. And this Gideon, a Midianite, was not, not Israelite, was so perplexed by this that's happening. So one day he was threading his wheat, hiding in the room. All of a sudden, the angels of God appeared and said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. 
And Gideon said, what, why are you calling me mighty man of valor? I'm hiding here. Why are you calling me mighty man? And the angel said, I've seen the afflictions of my people. And you are, I'm going to use you. God is going to use you to bring deliverance and this and that. And he was giving him all these blessed things he was going to do to Israel. And the man of God, the Gideon said, angel, you know, if God is with us, why are all this calamity? Why are all this poverty? Why are all this oppression? Where is the blessedness that you spoke of? Where are all these evil things happening to us? Why are we being tormented by the Midianite time and time and time and time again? Why am I going through what I'm going through? These cyclical patterns that I'm seeing in my life. It's like every payday. I plan to budget. I plan to save money. But then I get home, my washing machine is broken. My pipes busted. There's water everywhere. I have to take up tire. My child is sick. My, my stuff upon stuff keep happening. If God is with us, why are all this befalling us? Maybe that's what you're asking. You take one step forward, you take two steps forward only to be knocked down ten steps backwards. It's like you can't get ends to meet. It's like you can't see daylight. It's like gloominess all over. And you're asking, what, what, is, what am I doing wrong? Where, 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 where is the blessing? Where is the blessing? Everybody around me is getting blessed. I don't know where my paycheck goes. It's like I'm carrying a basket with holes in it and everything around me is just dropping. What is happening? So this frustrated Gideon was saying, God, where is that blessedness? And you know what? God replied. God replied back to him. And that's what we read. And God said, if you want my help, if you need me to break through for you, if you want to see the blessedness that I promised, then he promised. He said, I wish above all that you will prosper and be in health to the degree that your soul is prospering. You'll be the head and never beneath. You'll be a, bar a lender and never borrower. He said you eat the best of the land. He's spoken good concerning you. He promises good things concerning you. Is he a liar? Never. But what is happening here? So he told Gideon, you want me to help you? You need to go back home. Turn back home. Your father has built an altar for the devil. Your father has built an idol by the side of this altar. Your father is encouraging this town people, this countrymen, to come in and bow and worship the devil. You want me to help you? I cannot bless you with all of your idols. Hallelujah. Oh, my God is good. I will not bless you with all of your idols. And some of us, the idols is not a thing that we set up. It's not the altar that we build. Some of us, the idol is, is everything we put behind before God. Everything comes before our worship of God. Everything, our career, we hail our families, the very families he gave you, the very job he provided for you, the very money he gave you. Your money now is our idol. Many times, even entertainment, God said, cut up that TV and go and pray. Oh, uh, I will do it when this episode is over. Oh, I will do it when I, I, I finish with this and I finish with that. God said, no, I will not be a second fiddle to anything or anyone. You got to put me where I belong. But in this story, the father has built a physical altar. What is an altar? Altar, hallelujah. An altar is a place of sacrifice, a PowerPoint, where spiritual and physical strength is drawn both holy and unholy. It's a place where covenants are made, where agreements are forged. At, at this demonic altar, Satan is petitioned for protection. 
demonic altars, Satan is petitioning for provision, for protection, for blessing, for increases. It's the place where they go to curse people they don't like. They go to invoke incantations and chantings and, and curses and hexes and vexes upon people they wish to harm. It's the place where all evil is done. It's the place where blood sacrifices and all kinds of atrocities are made. So this place of idolatry uh, position, the the Midianites were being able to torment God's people. Oh, my God. They were able to torment God's people because of this open door. You cannot worship everything else and then expect God to bless you. You cannot go your way, do it your way, and expect God to breathe on your foolishness. We need to believe God. We need to hold him wholeheartedly. He said to him, if you want my blessing, if you want my intervention, if you want me in your situation, you got to live clean. You got to give idols away, whatever the idol is in your life. And you got to cleanse your heart. Make sure the, that your emotional stability is strong and is vibrant and is holy and it's righteous. And you are not able to push to and fro because emotionally you are bankrupt. God it's a God that will heal you today. He's God that's going to bring deliverance. He's God that is going to bring restoration, signs and effects of possible altars, endless struggles, endless pain, childlessness, broken relationship, derailed destiny, derailed purposes, systemic illness, systemic poverty, untimely death, chronic fear, chronic disease. All of this is a part and a sign to say, you know what? There is an altar somewhere. There is an altar somewhere. There is an altar somewhere. Well, well, you know what? In the 21st century, Americans, we know we, 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 don't, we don't have altars. Yes, you do, some of you. If you are from Africa, if you are of African descent, your people were not holy men. According to God's order, we were idol worshippers. And most homes in Africa has deities. And most families were dedicated. And devils and demons, they don't die. They live in households. They live in generations. They call them what? Familiar spirits. And they jump from generation to generation, family to family. Does, does it not surprise you that everywhere you go in the world, Black folks have the same struggles because most of our ancestors sold our souls to the devil. And so the Bible says that when you come in, you got to repent. You got to break. You got to renounce. I don't know what was done. I remember a few years back, probably two years by now, I was waking up one morning and I heard the Lord said, break every altar that's been erected on your behalf. Break every altar that was erected on your behalf. I woke up saying, oh my God, what is that? I never heard about no altars. So I got up and I started praying, researching, reading the Bible. And I realized that, wow. And I started praying and I started breaking. And I started breaking and I started praying. You, it, may not, it may be foolishness to you, but you know these things are real. Devils don't go. The fact that you are saved does not mean that everything in your life get taken off or cleansed by itself. Sometimes the devil has to be asked to leave. He has to be commanded to leave. It has to be things on your life need a breaking. It needs to be broken. So you need to take active position and say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you are not going to rule here. You are not going to rail here. Reign here. I command you to leave. And when you command, guess what? It leaves. If you want a reversal in everything that has happened that is unholy, if you want God 
to restore life back to you, to restore things that has been lost, to restore life. You want a recompense. You want God to pay back everything the enemy has taken, the enemy has stolen. You need to cleanse yourself. The Bible says that we should cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Hallelujah. So we need to cleanse ourselves. And after we've cleansed ourselves, we need to find a way to hide ourselves with the Lord. Hide ourselves. Walk in perpetual freedom. Walk in perpetual deliverance. You know, there's a girl called Mary Magdalene in Luke chapter 8 2. The Bible says Jesus casted out about seven demons out of this lady. She was set free. And there was nowhere in scripture that indicated even slightly that she needed deliverance after that first encounter. Why? Because she stayed with him. She stayed with him. She stayed with him. She communed with him. Everywhere he went, she went. Whatever he was doing, she was doing. Even at the tomb, she was one of the first to be cited. You know why? Because Jesus was everything. Jesus was a deliverer, a healer, a restorer, a lover, a king, and a God in her life. So she wrapped herself around him. You want to walk in deliverance? You got to wrap yourself around Jesus. You got to put away everything that will open doors for the enemy to come in. You got to make sure that your, your, your soul is cleansed in the name of Jesus. You got to take short accounts. Take short accounts. Someone offends you, be quick to forgive. If something happens that you don't like, be quick to let it go. Be quick to let it go. Take short accounts. You know, the Bible says cleanse yourself. Continue to cleanse yourself. The Bible said examine yourself. Continue to examine yourself. The Bible says that stay under the vine so the vine life will permeate inside of you, out of you. So remain there. Hallelujah. And replace that altar, whatever that was there. You know, he told, God told um, um, Gideon, he said, break that altar. Break that demonic altar, but then replace it with the altar for the Lord. Replace it. When the devil has gone out, don't let him come back and find it empty. Replace it. Replace it with another altar. Set up an altar. It may not be a physical altar whereby you go to meet God. But it's, it's better when there's a place you go to meet God. You go to commune with God. Just as they do in the natural, you're doing in the spirit. You go there and you bring your sacrifice of praise. You go there and you bring your sacrifice of worship. You go there and you just God say, God is between you and I. God, I love you with all of my heart. God, I present my children before you. I present myself as a living sacrifice. I at this altar of, 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 of righteousness, I present myself as a living sacrifice. Where do you have an altar? Do you pray? Do you have a prayer life? Do you meet with God? The same thing with Elijah. When Elijah called the fire to consume the prophets of Baal, before then he had to erase an altar. He had to erect an altar for the Lord. Have you erected an altar for God? If you haven't, it's good to begin. If you don't know him, it's good to get to know him. You cannot even get delivered and walk in deliverance if you don't even know him. Get to know him. Pray the sinner's prayer. Hallelujah. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wash me clean. Come on, pray. Give me the power to become a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, inbox women in fellowship. Let them know that you have prayed this prayer for the very first time. God bless you. And if you say, you know what, I everything you said, a, a thing or two, it's registering. You know, it, it may be something. 
It may be something in my life. You know, when I got saved, I was saved a long time, and there were so many things going on in my life. But one thing was the fact that it was so hard to get married. Uh, you know, I get in good relationships, and it's it, it just like I was afraid of commitment or something. It's just like it, it's, it was something. So one day God woke me up in a dream and he showed me a relationship, old relationship where I was cursed. And he showed it to me exactly how it happened. And he said, get up and break that. And I got up and I started warring. I started warring. I started warring. And from that time on, everything about my life began to change. And I saw God's grace in my life. From that time on, I had been saved, but that curse was still there. I had been saved, that, but that plague was still hanging over my life. It took God revealing to me, took revelation to show me, hey, no, this is happening because of this. Jesus healed many people in the Bible by first casting out demon out of them. The woman that was bowed. He said, this child of God, this child of God that whom Satan has bound for 12 long years or 18 long years. If you and I would say they were bound, be bowed because they, they had physical something, they were this and they were that. And, but Jesus saw behind what was causing that problem for that lady, and it was nothing but a demonic origin. The problem, her sickness had a demonic origin. Your problem may have a demonic origin. The fact that you can't keep relationship together, the fact that you, you, are, you can't balance your mind, maybe you are oppressing the mind, maybe you are going through anxiety, you're going through, sometimes you feel like you're losing your mind. It may have a demonic origin. Maybe there's this going on, and there's that going on. You know, I remember one other story where my brother, I, 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 my, my dad died of car accident. He loved cars, buying fast cars, and, and accident upon accident, and he died. And then my brother got the same thing, accident upon accident, and he died. And then my second brother started having accidents. And, and, and by this time, I was saved. And I said, uh-uh, no, this is not going to happen. This has a demonic origin. And we started breaking. We started binding. And from that time till now, he had not had another accident probably almost 30 years now. You know what? God is a deliverer. He wants to set you free. He's here to set you free. He, he's here to help you to walk in perpetual deliverance. Why are you not married by this time? You're beautiful. You're, you're smart. You got it together. Why is relationship breaking? Maybe that's a demonic origin. Father God, in the name of Jesus, come on, pray. Any altar... Any altar, come on, pray. You pray for yourself. Any altar that is still speaking against you, any altar that's still claiming life, any altar that's still in agreement with the works of darkness, Lord, we take it down in Jesus' name. Lord, we break every cyclical pattern in our lives in Jesus' name. We break every oppression by, that has come over altars, that has come over generational curses, that has come over the enemy's attacks over our lives. Lord, we break it now. We break forth of hell. We break attacks of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Say in Jesus name. I plead the blood. Come on. Plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over my mind. I plead the blood over my soul. I plead the blood over my spirit. I plead the blood over my children. I plead the blood over my life. I plead the blood in every dimension of my life. I plead the blood in the name of Jesus. Come on, plead the blood. Come on, plead the blood. Plead the blood. 
plead the blood in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every altar that is standing and demanding and taking and snatching and stealing and devouring our increase, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. Any Midianite spirit that are working against us, we break the attacks, we resist their works, we reject the assignment. They will not succeed over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, arise, God. Let our enemies be scattered. Come on, arise, Lord. Arise, Lord. Come on, tell him, Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Come on, Lord, arise. Arise, arise. Lord, arise and let our enemies be scattered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, Robo Shania. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said, no weapon formed against me will succeed. In the name of Jesus. He said, who the sun set free. Come on, you are free. Come on, you are free. Claim your freedom. Claim your freedom freedom tonight. Claim your freedom tonight. Come on, claim your freedom tonight. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus, we break every yoke. We break every bondage. We rebuke every assignment. We reject, we resist, and we reject every assignment of devils in the blood of Jesus. Rise, Lord. Arise, Lord God. 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 Release victory. Release victory. Release victory. Receive your victory. Receive your victory. Receive your victory. Receive your breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give God praise. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Lord, we seal your people with the blood of Jesus. And we seal this word with the blood of Jesus. We thank you for total deliverance. We thank you for total healing. We thank you for total, complete restoration. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Where God richly, may God richly, 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 richly bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here at Fresh Anointing House of Worship for our midweek service. Don't forget to join us on Sunday in person at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. You can reserve your seats now at fayhow.org. If you can't join us in person, join us online. There are multiple ways to give here at Fresh Anointing. Head over to fayhow.org and click the green donate button or download the free Fayhow app or text Fresh Anointing to 77977. Please stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And as always, stay blessed.